Hi guys, Chris here, back with the Black Shark. So this is Xiaomi's first gaming mobile phone. So it's gaming focused. You can see we've got this add-on joypad. If you haven't seen it in my unboxing, this is a Bluetooth joypad that you can clip onto it, but you have to have the case on the phone. So in this video here, I'm just gonna focus on the gaming performance. So we'll see what kind of frame rates we're gonna get, if we're gonna see any slowdown. And then right at the end of this video as well, check the thermals of it, just physically to see how hot is it getting on the back here. I've noticed that it does actually get a little bit warm there and that's to be expected when you're gaming for long durations now if you also missed that unboxing i'll quickly just show you the antutu scores so it is really good you can see it's massive this score this is probably one of the highest you will see until probably the one plus six comes out so the snapdragon 845 with the adreno 630 gpu and six gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage here. That's UFS 2.1 spec. So a very, very quick phone. Now the UI on it is Joy UI version one. It's quite lightweight. It's not as heavy as MIUI. It's just like a skin that's on top of Android 8. So for this video, to get the maximum performance, I'm gonna be using what's called Shark Space. That's that dedicated switch. So you switch that up, you go into Shark Space, you're gonna get no interruptions. It is also supposed to boost the gaming performance. Now I'll just give you a very quick overview on this. This video is about focusing on the gaming, but all your games are listed in here. Normally they are automatically added. If they're not, then you have to go through the menu system here and just add those games to that. So every single game you need to actually set up the controller. So you go into the game pad here when you swipe down on the home button it brings this up. So you need to remove to move around the on-screen control. So you can see right now here, I've got this already set up and configured for PUBG. So tapping this, that is actually gonna be my scope to zoom in. That one there's just gonna be the fire button. And you see moving that around, that is gonna be the, the movement. Now, if you don't like the movement, then you could actually move that over to aiming. If you wanted to aim with the joystick, then that is possible to set that up. But anyway, let's get into the gameplay and see how it performs. So I thought I'd quickly show you the start here because often you get a bit of lag and you see that is very smooth right now, rendering all those different players in there. That's not a problem, but now and then you do see a little bit of stutter here and there. And it's not running full 60 frames per second, though I don't have an FPS counter on this. But I can tell that it's just not 100%. It's not 60 frames per second. I know this because I've been playing other games that do have frames counters on them, so you can see the FPS. And when they're running 60, you really do know. So this to me is around about 40 or something like that. So one thing to point out with these controls is that you can't get the sprint lock because the joystick's just not going to push up further enough. So there's one thing to think about too when you're playing this game. So if you want to lock the sprint, then you still have to do it with your finger there manually. Now the way I have it configured, so the scope is just here to look down at least the barrel. I want to have the scope. So that's easy enough to switch to that. It's quite quick. And then of course to fire. That also means that for driving, of course, the controls aren't set up. So again, gonna have to just switch back to using the touchscreen. So it might actually just be more comfortable just to go with the touchscreen to start with. So this next title I'm looking at is called Lineage Revolutions. And this is probably one of the most demanding games actually that I would test out. You sometimes see a little bit of stutter and lag. So the graphics is very demanding. It's another one of those ones based on the Unreal Engine. So I did have to configure the controls a little bit. I did have some problems with the gamepad. If you set it right on where the joystick is with the on-screen buttons, it didn't actually work too well. So this is how I saved it. I've just set up the attack on one of the, the triggers here on the top, of course. I'll just show you quickly a bit of gameplay. So using that trigger, it's not super comfortable, as I mentioned in the unboxing and my follow-up review that it's sometimes it's just easier to use the on-screen controls of course we've got way more buttons here i've only got two buttons on this so there's not a lot there but the performance of this game is good it's just now and then you see a little bit of slowdown so it's definitely not running a continual 60 frames per second not at least with this demanding game this title now is called standoff 2 and it's super similar to counter-strike i mean it's just a rip-off of counter-strike but of course running here on Android. Now I do have the trigger set up, so the triggers are for firing. And whoops, so I managed to trigger the menu. I don't know how I managed to do that. It should actually be disabled. And I did find the controls a little bit difficult on this one. Oh, dead already. You see with the frames counter, at least this game actually has an FPS counter on it. It's 59, 60 frames per second the whole time, no matter how many players are on the server and what's been rendered in front of you. It's always a steady 60 frames per second, so it's really, really smooth. 
very fast as you can see here. So this one runs perfect. Now one other question that did pop up is what about the built-in screen recorder? Now it's right here. The quality is not that great. So some of the free screen recorders you will get off Google Play Store actually do a better job because they record audio. There's no settings for this. It's either on or off. It just starts recording here. So you can set it up to start recording like it's on right now. But the problem with it is it does not record any audio from the game or the microphones. This next title is Asphalt Extreme and this one, it's better without a controller really. So I'm going to be using the accelerometer for the steering and everything, as you normally would. You see it's running fine. Couple of little stutters here and there. This title here now is Shadow Fight 3. Really good looking game. And let's see what it's like now with the joystick. Seems to be a little bit easier, in fact, to control. And pretty easy win there for me. So this title here is called Critical Ops, and it does also have a frame counter right up here. You can see 59 frames per second the whole time. And yes, it's another Counter-Strike clone, as you can see. We're bomb diffusing, planting bombs, things like that. Oh, and I'm about to die. Okay, one kill. At least that's something. Two. So it does make the controls a lot easier, I find, having the joypad, but it's not entirely comfortable. I'm starting to get a little bit of a sore hand because of how small it is. And this title here is Hit, or Heroes of Incredible Tales. Quite a graphically demanding game. It does look really good, too. And this is running fine. You see the occasional little stutter, but I think it's more to do with the internet and things loading in. So these are the settings that I have on that's in the game panel as well. I thought I'd show you this. So the frame rate optimization, this apparently is supposed to boost performance. This is some sort of acceleration service. I think it's using a VPN to make things a little bit faster with your ping times. Our super touch, that just increases the touch response there. I haven't honestly noticed much difference at all between having it on or off. It seems the same to me. Now, Game Lab, this is to do with the LED lights that are on the back of this, but this seems to only work in China or with Chinese games. So I do actually have this enabled. It is on the light effect. So this is the LEDs uh, that will light up actually behind the logo. So it will change color, it will turn red, and it's basically RGB. There is also some lights in here, but I've never seen it actually come on for any of the games that I have tested. So that's why I think it's just Chinese only titles that it supports. So this title is World of Tanks and this one I feel is a little bit better to control actually with the controller here. You can see just for getting around with the tanks sometimes can be a little bit awkward. And I've configured the controller so one is just to toggle magnification to zoom right in. The other of course is to fire. And I find that works quite well. Yeah, but no issues with the frame rate. Like all of the games I have tested, every single game is running super smooth. Really good frame rates here. This, I would say, is running at 60 frames per second. Without a doubt, this is just so smooth. Oh dear, and I'm about to probably die here. Okay, so I haven't covered every single game here, but that is it for this video. Otherwise, it will be too long. I had something like 20 different games requested. But just know that it's going to run every single game, the Snapdragon 845, on this mobile or on any mobile, like the Mi Mix 2S. Okay, so this thing is barely getting warm. It's around 30 degrees there, you can see just on the back. And I have actually been gaming for about an hour and a half. I spent a lot of time downloading things as well and using it in gaming. So that's not bad at all. It barely gets warm. It's a lot cooler than the surface of the Mi Mix 2S, definitely. That one seems to heat up a bit. Where it does get a little bit warmer, I have seen it hit 30 
five degrees, which is still nothing, is when you're charging at the same time and gaming. So I have done about six hours of gaming now in total with this gamepad and I can safely say that it's a little uncomfortable at times. I'm finding that I'm getting a bit of a, a cramp or ache in my thumb here. So that is not good. And really, is it worth getting it just for that controller? I don't think it is. Just get yourself something like this. One of these controllers, there's so many out there, all these different models, Bluetooth controllers, and there are apps out there that you can map the on-screen controls using a Bluetooth tooth controller so the games that don't support it you can actually get it to work and that'll work quite well the good thing about this of course this is very similar the ergonomics to an xbox 360 controller so this is really comfortable you're not going to get any cramps with this one you can play for hours on end and you just got to flip this up and for example the mix 2s you can put that right in there and there you go Came, gaming like this is a lot more comfortable of course it's a bulky joystick it's not as small as this but it really depends on or what your needs are there. If you need something that's more portable, okay, this is all right. And and using it, especially, you know, I've noticed in games like World of Tanks, it does make it a lot more easier to control your tank, to drive around and things. So it does help out. Thanks a lot for watching this gaming review here. Now I'm working towards the full review of the Black Shark here. I also have in my possession as well the Mi 6X. If you're interested in that, check out my unboxing video. And I will also be taking a look at Xiaomi's Mi Gaming laptop, hopefully next week.